Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. First of all, again, I remind you on Saturday, so in two days, we have the live stream at 6 p.m. Central European time. I will show you a little bit around my studio here, how I prepare the videos, how I test them, and how I work on them before uploading them to YouTube. And in this video, after so many requests I had from you, I will install here Manjaro Dual Booting with Windows 10. Let's get going. So here we go, we are here on Windows and the first thing we want to do here, we want to make space for installing Manjaro. So to do this, let's pull up the disk management by right clicking on the start menu and go here to disk management. And let me increase the window here so that it's easier to see. There you go. We have three partitions that Windows created here. We have a EFI partition, which is 100 megabytes. We have the C drive, which is the installation partition for Windows. And we have a 500 megabytes healthy recovery partition automatically created for us. So I want to make actually space for Manjaro on this C partition. So what we're going to do here, we're going to right click on the partition and click shrink volume. And we need to decide how much space we want to give to Manjaro. So this disk is not big. This is 150 gigabytes. So I'm thinking to give Manjaro around 80 gigs. So I'll type in here 80,000 since this is in megabytes and then I can click shrink. It's going to take a second to perform the operation. There you go. And now we have our unallocated space here. So what we need to do now, we need to download the Manjaro's ISO from the website. You can choose the edition that you like best. There is a XFCE edition, which is the flagship. We have KDE and many others. Just select the one you want, burn it to a USB stick and boot up your computer from the USB stick. And I'll meet you back in a second at the Manjaro login prompt. So here we go. We are now on the Manjaro login prompt welcome screen here. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to configure my system. So let me select my time zone. And that's in Europe. And the city closest to me is always the last one on the list. This one right here. And I'm going to change also my key table since I don't have a US keyboard. So I'm just going to select mine here. And then we can boot Manjaro. I don't have to worry about the driver because I'm on a VM. However, if you do have a system with an NVIDIA card, for example, or a card which requires proprietary drivers, go to the drivers here and select instead of free, non-free. Just to make sure that your drivers boot up with the system. But I'm going to go back here and now we can boot Manjaro by hitting enter here on the option. And it's going to take a second here to boot up the machine. And so we are now in Manjaro. So the first thing I need to do here is to adjust my screen resolution. So let me click this off and this one as well. I'll right click on the desktop, applications, settings, display, and let's select 1920 per 1080 and click apply. There you go looks much better to me and so let's get going with the installation let's double click on the installer here install manjaro and we are asked to select the language so in my case i'm going to go here for american english and then click next now the time zone was correctly detected because i have an internet connection already since my pc is connected with an internet cable however if you don't you can go down here to the internet icon and you will have probably your wi-fi in here you can connect to here by clicking the network and entering your password in case you need to change this manually, just select the region and the city and you'll be good to go. Now we can click next. And here I need to select my keyboard. Again, I don't have a US keyboard, so let me select mine quickly and click next. And this is where things get interesting. So we could go and say install alongside with Windows, but I want to make sure that I'm installing on the partition I created and that the EFI partition is correctly detected. So let's go to manual partitioning and then click next. So here we have our drive. So let's analyze it a little bit. We have here SDA1, which is our FAT32 partition. This is the EFI partition that Windows created. We have a 16 megabytes Microsoft Reserve partition. We don't care about this one. We have SDA3, which is where Windows is installed. We have free space. This is where we create the space for Manjaro. And then we have SDA4, which is the health recovery partition that Windows created as well. And we have a two megabytes unknown partition. This is just for alignment, so we can leave this alone. So what we need to do here, we need to create our root partition. Well, we have to create a root partition because it's mandatory. I don't really have much space here to create also a home partition, but if you have a bigger partition, you can definitely do that. And the process is fairly simple anyway. So let's click on the free space and click create. And here we can define the size. So because I want to create only one partition, I'm just going to accept the default here. Now, if you're planning also to do a home partition, select another size so that you have extra space for the home partition afterwards. 
But in my case, this is fine. For the file system, I'm going to go with ext4 and I don't need to encrypt it. Now, for the mount point, I need to choose here the root directory, which is represented by this slash here. And for the flag, I'm going to go down here and choose root. Now, you would perform the same again if you want to create a home partition by selecting here for the mount point slash home. And for the flags, you actually don't need to select anything in here. But in my case, this is all fine, so I can click OK. Now, STA1 is our EFI partition, and it's already there. So this is where we need to install the bootloader. So we need to basically define here just the mount point. And I know Manjaro wants to have this on slash boot slash EFI. So let's double click the partition. And the size is here, so I don't want to resize this for now. I need to keep it. I don't want to format it. Otherwise, I lose the Windows boot manager. File system is fine. For the mount point here, we are going to choose slash boot slash EFI. And because this is a EFI system, it's going to be the flag boot. And then we can click OK. Then we can just click Next. And we can create our username. So let me put in here my name. And I'll select here my username. And for the computer name, I'm going to give Manjaro. And the password. And retype it. And I'm going to select use the same password for the administrator account and then click next. Now it's asking us whether we want to install an office suite. Well, I don't actually want to do this right now just to make the installation a little bit shorter. So I'm going to select no office suite. Otherwise, you can select between LibreOffice and FreeOffice. Then I'm going to click next. And this is a summary of what's going to happen now when we install Manjaro. So everything looks good to me. So we can click install and confirm by clicking install now. So now it's basically a matter of waiting until the system finishes installing. So I'll be back when it's done. Well, there you go. The system is now installed. So we can click here, restart now, and then click done. It's going to take a second to reboot the machine. And there we go. Here we have the bootloader where we can choose Manjaro or Windows. So let's go ahead and boot Manjaro. And let me enter here my password to log in. There you go. And again, I need to readjust my screen resolution because it's a new system. So let me click this off and right click here, Applications, Settings, Display, select the resolution down here and click Apply and keep the configuration. There you go. Let me center this window here. So what I'm doing normally when I install Manjaro, the first thing I do is going through the screen here and read whatever I need to read and also click on Applications so that I can customize my installation the way I want to. For example, if you click on the browsers here, you have by default Firefox installed, but if you don't want that and you want, for example, Chromium or Brave, you can check this and uncheck Firefox, and you can do the same for the other applications in the system. Then once you are done, you can click Update System, and your system will be reconfigured based on your choices. This is an absolutely great tool to have, and it's really nice that Manjaro offers this when you boot up the machine after the installation, so that you can customize it the way you want to. Now let me close this up, and let's open up a terminal here. And let me increase the size of it. There you go. And I'll center the window. And the next thing I would like to do is actually to configure my Manjaro mirror lists because I know normally they are not that fast out of the box, for me at least. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a command to configure the mirrors for my country. In my country, we have normally quite fast mirrors, so I know that selecting that is going to be the best solution for me. And to do this, I'm going to type in sudo pacman-mirrors and then dash c for country, and then the country where I'm in is Switzerland. And also, I'm going to perform by attaching another command, the sudo pacman-syyu, which is going to resynchronize the servers and update the packages eventually. And then I can just hit enter. Enter my sudo password. And it's going to take a second to do that. There you go. There are already some updates here, so we can just hit enter. And it's going to take a second to finish up. And I'll proceed with the installation. And I'll be back in a moment. So there you go, the packages are now installed and the system is up to date. Now we are basically done here with Manjaro. We can start to use the system normally. But what if you want to actually once remove Manjaro from the system and reinstall maybe another distro? And how do we actually, more importantly, remove Grub from the system? Because once we remove the partition from Manjaro, the Grub bootloader will be still visible. So how do we do this? Well, we need to boot back in Windows. And let me do this, and I'll meet you back on the Windows desktop in a second. 
So we are back in Windows here. So the first thing we need to do is to actually delete the partition where we installed Manjaro, if you want to do that, of course. So we can right click on the Start menu and go to Disk Management. Now let me again expand the window a little bit here. So again, we have here our C drive where Windows is installed, and this is the partition where we installed Manjaro before. So what we can do here, we can, for example, remove it by right clicking on the partition and click Delete Volume. And I want to remove it, so I just confirm by clicking Yes. And it's going to take a second to do this. And there you go. Now you need to decide whether you want to install another distro on this partition, although we still need to delete grub from the system, which we will do in a second, or you want to use again this unlocated space for Windows. In this case, you can right click on the Windows installation and click extend volume, then click next, accept the defaults here and then click next, and finish the process by clicking finish. And now you have your C drive here complete. Now let's close this up and let's take care of grub. Now, Grub, as we've seen before, it's installed in the EFI partition here in Windows. How do we access actually this partition? Because it's not accessible by default. So what we need to do, we need to go into the Windows PowerShell. Let's right click again on the Start menu and click on Windows PowerShell, the admin version. And then I'm going to click Yes. And let me expand the window here so that you can see better. And we need to use a program called Disk Part. So let's type in Disk Part and hit Enter. And let's type in list volume and hit enter. Now, what this command does, it's going to basically show you the volumes in our system. So the volume zero is the CD-ROM. There is nothing in there, so we can leave this out. We have volume one, which is C, which is the installation directory where Windows is installed, and it's 150 gigabytes. We have volume two, which is the recovery partition that was created by Windows. And then we have volume three, which is a FAT32 file system, healthy system. So this is actually the EFI partition. So we need to select this volume here in this part. And to do this, we can type in select vol3 and hit enter. And as you can see now, volume three is a selected volume. So the next step is to assign a letter to this volume so that it's visible in the file explorer. So to do that, we can type in assign letter equal x. I take x because it's free in the system. You can choose any other letter which is free in the system if you want to, and then hit enter. Now we successfully assigned the letter to the drive. Now let's open up File Explorer and go to this PC. And as you can see, we have our x drive here. The problem here is that if we double click this, we get an error. And even when we click continue, we have denied permission to this folder. And if we go into the security tab, it's a little bit tricky. So the easiest way to access this partition is to close this up first. Let's close the window and search in the taskbar for the task manager. Now, if you don't see the full expanded window here, it's because you have fewer details selected. So if you do, just click more details and you'll see the full window. And then click on file and then run new task. Then click browse. And here clicks this PC again. And now if we double click the X drive, we have access to it. Now here is our EFI folder. This contains all the bootloaders in the system. So we have, for example, here the Windows boot manager and also the Manjaro grub bootloader. So let's double click on the folder. And as you can see, we have a boot folder, a Manjaro folder and a Microsoft folder. Well, we don't need to say this, but leave the Microsoft folder here alone because otherwise you'll lose the Windows boot manager. What we need to do here, we need to delete the Manjaro folder by right clicking it and select delete. Now we need to confirm this by clicking yes. And let's just check the boot folder to see if there's nothing else in there. So it's empty, that's fine. So that's all there is to it. So we can click cancel and we can cancel out also from the task manager here and close the window. Now, the last step is to remove the letter we assigned to the EFI partition. And to do this, we can type in remove letter equal X and hit enter. And there you go. Now, if we click again on the file explorer and go to this PC, we'll see the X drive is not anymore there. So we can close this up and exit this part here by typing in exit and hit enter. And we can close the Windows PowerShell. And that's all there is to it. So this is how you can dual boot Windows 10 with Manjaro. And I showed you also how to remove it and remove also the grub bootloader. So there you go. This is how you can install Windows 10 with Manjaro. I think Manjaro is a great distribution, especially the boot screen after the installation where you can choose your application. It's definitely a great touch to customize your experience. 
Again, I remind you, Saturday we have the live stream at 6 p.m. Central European time. I hope to see many of you there. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.